Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode is going to be installing a thumb on a Ford 555 backhoe. And I've got the uh, thumb in the box here, so let's just go ahead and cut it open and see what we got. View manual online, I like that. All right, so it looks like we got a, uh, a big thumb here. And um, man, this is nice. This is really heavy duty. Um, so I got this, oh, I got a bent pin. Look at there, shipping damage. I might have one of those laying around. Let's hope so anyway. All right, so let's, uh, let's get all these pins out of here and see what the components look like. Shouldn't need a hammer to get this thing apart. I mean, it's nice that it's tight, but come on. Okay. Now we're getting down to it. All right, I like it. Ooh! That came out of there. All right. So here is the individual components um, from the thumb that I'm going to be putting on the Ford 555 backhoe. And this was from a um, company called Titan. I just looked up thumbs on the internet and uh, I had watched some of uh, Camarada's um, videos and, and saw how useful these thumbs can be in picking up brush and you know using it to move uh, smaller sticks and logs and brush around and stuff like that for bigger kind of burn piles. And I was just really getting nowhere um, loading up uh, the logs and the brush and doing small piles. So I'm going to try bigger piles and then using the backhoe to feed those, those burn piles. So this, is, uh, this looks like a fun project. Um, this thing was super, super heavy. I feel bad for the delivery guy that had to deliver it, honestly. Um, really heavy duty. It looks like a really nice unit. So this is the individual pieces. Um, this is going to be welded on to the backhoe here and also um, this piece here, that'll weld on to the, to the backhoe. So let's, uh, let's get the backhoe up here and start mocking everything up and welcome to man time. So we've got the backhoe up here now um, after having to charge the battery because the battery was dead. Um, so I'm just gonna mock all this up first and then from there uh, clean up all these Mating surfaces, get them clean and ready for weld, and, uh, and then we'll go from there and, and get it welded up here. I think I'm going to use the uh, stick welder, um, trying to gain more experience with that. Uh, it, it's pretty easy to just run a MIG welder and run a good bead, but uh, this would be a good practice exercise for a MIG welder as well. And trying to uh, learn how to weld with, the, I think it's 7018 uh, versus the 6011. 6011 is pretty easy, but... Uh, try to challenge myself a little bit here but uh, let's get this thumb mocked up and uh, and see what it looks like all right so this is going to sit somewhere in here and then this is going to mount up to it here and then it, and then eventually fold up into it um, so All right, let's get some clamps and, uh, and get it clamped up here. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess that looks pretty good. Um, I was kind of thinking it would be a little bit lower. But it's got this uh, this gusseted plate down here. Um, so in order for it to sit flush, I'm either, either going to have to grind some of that plate. Uh, yeah, I may have to grind some of this plate down here to make it sit a little bit lower. I'd like to have it a little bit further to where it's more parallel in the, uh, the mid-setting like that. All right, that looks good. Let's uh, disassemble it back down, break it down, and um, I'm just going to shoot for kind of as low as I can get there on this gusseted plate. Uh, yeah, that looks fine. Alright, so we're almost ready to weld here, and we just want to check and make sure that uh, we're about the same on either side as far as the distance. So I'm going to use this little general um, measure, measuring device, made in the USA. Go USA. All right, that looks pretty good. I measured here, and then uh, and then on the other side, same. A um, couple of pro tips for uh, for welding that I found. I'm not you know a day to day welder, but uh, I have welded up you know like a tube cage buggy and stuff like that. And uh, the the key is getting your settings right on the welder, having clean surfaces to weld to and then also having a clean and, uh, and secure ground. Um, you get those things right and, uh, and things just tend to fall into place. I'm going to be using 7018 and uh, one of my buddies said you want to run that uphill, um, you, you want to push it uphill and, uh, and that way the slag drops down. So I'm going to start from the bottom and weld up and then that way the, uh, the f I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the flux is uh, is dripping down while the weld is coming up so let's try that out
All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk about welding 7018 uh, with a Miller diesel um, welder. Um, I, I believe it's a uh, 300 model. It will go up to uh, 300 amps. I was running about uh, one, right around 160, 170 amp, I think. It, it's hard to tell on there. I was just kind of adjusting it. Uh, it says it's between 115 and 240. And I was set at 40 on the um, fine dial. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm guessing it's around 160. But uh, welding with the 7018, um, what I found worked better was to come and kind of look underneath uh, where the rod was. And you can see here progressively I got a little bit better um, until it's almost looking like something that might happen with a MIG welder. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'll be all right with it. I think it looks, I think it looks fine. I think uh, the test of time will tell. Um, and... Uh, you know, I'm I'm pleased with it. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna finish welding this up. If uh, you like these videos, give me a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, a comment. Tell me how good my welds are. Tell me how bad they are. Let me know. Yeah, the coolest thing I've found with this uh, 7018 is uh, right now it just looks like a bunch of garbage on there. But uh, you go to breaking that. Breaking that uh, flux and slag away there. And underneath you've got a really nice weld. Um, I, I just find that really, really cool. Let's uh, get this thumb on here and put it up and down and then see where uh, the next section is going to go here. So in one instance, it's going to be down here, right, like that, and in the other instance, it's going to fold up, Okay, so this is going to line up with this center pin here, and then that's going to go through there. So this is where this is going to be. So then, I just need to figure out where this is going to land. Pretty much right there.
I think uh, I think we're done here. I think I got it. Let's uh, let's try it out here and see how it works. So what I'm gonna need to do to flip this around and flip this up here, is get it up here, and then use this pin to get that up there, and then. Uh, both. But it doesn't line up. Now why doesn't it line up? It's close. Oh, it's right there. I should have put that up first, but I'm going to grab my grinder and grind that off a little bit. The whole issue is uh, all right. So that goes through there, but when I go to put it up on here, all of a sudden it won't go. How is that possible? So did this thing warp? goes yeah I'm just really confused uh, if anybody's put together one of these Titan um, thumbs and had the same issue let me know um, and it looks like there's been some finishing issues with the piece here. It's pretty cheap though. I mean, 250 bucks uh, or 260 bucks shipped. Um, you can't ask for much more than that. And what I'll probably end up doing is just taking my uh, burr tool and wallowing out these holes a little bit um, to make that fit. But it's, it's really confusing. The pin, you know, the pin goes in there just fine, and the pin goes in there just fine. But you put those two pieces together, how it's supposed to be up, and uh, I initially thought it had something to do with the, the piece up here, but that is not, that is not what's doing it. Hmm. Well, let's at least put it together and see how it looks uh, when it's in the down position, right? I can't put it in the up position, but we'll try it in the down position. Yeah, this thing is pretty heavy duty, that's for sure.
Okay, well there it is in the in the down position. Um, I'm gonna have to wallow out these holes a little bit, or come up with a way to uh, to get it to be in the up position before I can uh, take it into the field and use it, or before I can even really use the backhoe at all now. So uh, that'll be the project for tomorrow and another episode where we'll take this out and use it and uh, and see how it does and start a big brush fire. But uh, it's going to do it for today on Man Time, guys. Get out there. Have you some Man Time, too.